and the FA Cup, sponsored by AXA, has reached the first round proper, which gives the opportunity for the Match of the Day cameras to pay their first ever visit to Doncaster. Halifax provided the opposition, Tony Gubber, the commentary. Despite losing their league status, Doncaster stayed a full-time professional club, and it's the magic of the FA Cup that the first round gives them a chance to prove their work against the team that replaced them in Division 3. The conference side boasts a wealth of experience, like striker Mike Newell, 17 years in the game and a Premiership winner with Blackburn just a few seasons ago. But they also have players who've only recently given up their jobs to go full-time. Defender Simon Marples was a bricklayer, white man Matt Caldwell was a postman, and striker Glenn Kirkwood worked in a sweet factory. Halifax have former West Ham player Peter Butler as their midfield general, and they've given Matthew Clark, a six feet four inch tall teenage striker, his chance up front today, hoping that he'll dominate the corners and set pieces. Graham Barber is the referee, and the wind snatching at his clothes tell you just how blustery it is here. Doncaster in the all white are attacking the goal to the left. They've got Newell up front with number nine, Glenn Kirkwood, who's on the chase. And the first foul against Kirkwood. Free kick to Halifax. Doncaster manager Ian Snowden tries to watch the first half from the director's box. That's him on the far right, well muffled. He rarely achieves that. Free kick that time against Jamie Patterson. Dean Walling plays international football with St. Kitts and Nevis. Newell looking for the flick on. That came off the defender. Kirkwood underneath. Here's Caldwell. Good little turn by Caldwell. Could we let it run? Oh, Newell couldn't get a foot on it. Kirkwood who had the initial shot. And the veteran Mike Newell will be 35 before the season finishes. Just couldn't get a, a foot on the ball after it came off a defender first corner to be taken by Sean Goodwin they still haven't cleared it and it needed the man on the post and that was Peter Butler there was always good support to Doncaster sharp turn by Kirkwood then it hit the defender Walling's header Lays it back. Chance here. Chris Tate on his left foot. Well, interestingly enough, he was a player whom Doncaster wanted to bid for when he was signed by Halifax from Scarborough in the summer. will take the free kick Sutherland and Walling have both gone forward for this set piece and Doncaster may be in danger of getting caught short at the back pushing so many players forward here's Painter through to Matthew Clark it's the first really clear cut chance and Doncaster got away with it they pushed the two central defenders forward for the set piece and on the quick break they were caught short at the back his chase memory back to Marshalls good surging run by the right back to away from him Doncaster have started this second half by swapping the two wide men. And Neil's header there, he just got a glance on it. Walling gets there ahead of Clark, it'll be Halifax throw.
is Tate. Oh, Halifax has scored. A moment of hesitance and indecision in Doncaster's defence. taken the lead themselves a moment earlier the conference side are punished for the first real mistake at the back Goodwin plants it back in up from the referee's assistant on this near side and this shirt would put that in with his arm or had the flag already gone up for offside here's penny pushed over by Patterson free kick now it's right on the edge of the penalty area it's an opportunity for the, the two central defenders to come forward Walling and Sutherland and is this the chance for the conference side to get back on level terms. McIntyre takes it, went for placement. Doncaster with an effort, just drifted wide of that angle of post and bar. Well, children have been charged four pounds today, but part of Doncaster's policy of getting youngsters on the terraces, in some games they're only charged a penny. from the dugout before Scott Maxfield takes this free kick Doncaster have pushed a lot of players forward oh the keeper drops it well there was a real crowd ahead of Lee Butler keeper dropping it and the toe poke knocking it wide Butler laying things back, calming things down. Here's Mitchell. He's going to be fed all the way back to Lee Butler. Halifax conscious that the, the clock is running down. Here's Patterson with the left foot. Oh, Patterson has wrapped it up surely. Jamie Patterson with the deadly left foot. Top scorer for Halifax last season with 11 goals. Fed by Gorm. And with space in front of him, time to take a really good look at the target and knock it wide of Andy Warrington. in Division 3, looking for promotion. Maxfield and Goodwin. Mitchell won the header. This is Patterson. Butler. Here's Clark. Doncast 
after this season. Halifax, the team who replaced them in the Football League 18 months ago, good enough to put the conference side out of this season's competition. Goals from Chris Tate at the start of the second half, just after Doncaster themselves have nearly taken the lead. But the killer blow really was the, the goal from the Jamie Patterson, which came eight minutes from time. In the end, Halifax looks well worth their victory. Final score here is Doncaster nil, Halifax 2. Ian, you'll feel that 2 0 is a bit unfair. Well, second half, I thought uh, Halifax were the better team, to be quite honest. Uh, first first 10 minutes, I thought we had a couple of chances, half chances cleared off the line. But uh, all in all, I think the I think this team deserves to win in Halifax. Well, Mike, what's it like to come here and, and know that people are wondering if you're going to be the victims of a giant killing? It was tough, I knew that, but I knew that from the start, and I'm trying to tell my players the first 20 minutes were important. I mean, it's my first manager's job, three and a half months into the job, and a, and a cup tie at Doncaster. So uh, I was pleased for the lads, we kept going, especially second half, we look, uh, kept our shape, it was a great performance, so please. Being drawn against the team that had replaced you in the Football League 18 months ago must have been a, an extra bit of incentive. Yeah, we were looking forward to it, we've been looking forward to it since the draw were made, to be honest, and I think you could see that with the size of the crowd and the anticipation of the crowd, uh, but it just didn't materialise. Second I thought first half were even Stevens, but uh, give, give Halifax a bit of credit. I thought they did a good professional job on the second half. Yeah, you try and watch the first half from the director's box, don't you? But you never manage it. You always end up in the dugout. <laughs> That's right. I try and stay as far away as possible from referees and uh, linesmen, to be quite honest. So I sit with my chairman. But uh, I lasted longer than I did on Friday night at Telford. I lasted two minutes. But uh, oh, I just like to voice my opinion to the boys and encourage them and try to uh, urge them along. And unfortunately, it didn't work to 